What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, we're looking at FPL watch list ahead of game week 33, which is obviously a blank game week. There's important things to consider, potentially uh, blanks and doubles still to come. Obviously, the game week for 32 isn't quite finished yet, so we're looking ahead without knowing about all that. And obviously, there's all this Super League stuff as well, which I may or may not put a video out on this channel. If not, I'll definitely do one on my um, other football channel which there's a link in the description below at least there should be so make sure to check that out so i will have something to say about that uh, but for now i'm just going to get on with fpl just treat it as normal as possible uh, and yeah keep up with the content and hope the fpl and the premier league and everything like that survive so if you do enjoy it please do give it a like hit subscribe for new around here and let's jump into it so mason greenwood has to be on there and i know last week i said i wasn't quite sure he'd be a great option because of the minutes and obviously i've been made to look like a little bit of an idiot i did say i did think he was a good option if he got regular minutes i just wasn't quite sure that was going to be the case one thing that happened in that match against burnley was cavani didn't start and i thought given that he came off for like i think it was like 59 or 60 minutes in the europa league i thought for sure that he would start and then probably also play the Leeds game as well but that hasn't happened right and that then tells me that he's going to have to be managed way more than I thought I think the idea of playing three games even if he doesn't play the full 90 minutes like three games in a week is just not going to happen so that gives a chance for Greenwood to play more games now a lot of this is going to depend how Man United set up which is what I was saying last week so against Leeds for example I would not be surprised to see Fred and McTominay and Pogba's playing really well at the moment so he has to be on the left then Rashford fits in somewhere that could be on the right and then Cavani up front but that's not necessarily going to ha be how it happens every single week. And so Greenwood is going to get minutes over on that right, sometimes in the middle. I still think it would be naive to bring him in and expect him to start every single game. I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but he is likely to come on. And when he does start, he's performing well. His underlying stats are looking good. I think it's 0 0.4 expected goal involvement per 90 minutes, which is up from last year. So if you remember, he went on that huge um hot streak at the end of last season everyone loved him he's a great finisher and then this season i kind of compared him to lingard how remember that he did have that great finishing streak and then it kind of went to pot and he's not really done that well so far this year but his underlying stats are quite good for a seven million pound player now the reason i'm looking at him is because lingard came off injured in the last game week now i know that was probably cramp and he's probably going to be fine but we need to see what's said and if you look at the fixtures coming up like kane might be another player um, that's potentially injured it's all the all these players were waiting for news on and that could mean putting more money into midfield maybe going three five two and therefore someone like greenwood is definitely coming on to my list of players to look at right uh, leads away up next definitely heightens that because that's a really good game i think his pace his finishing ability uh, is definitely I, I expect him to start that game is basically what i'm trying to say um but again, who knows? It could be Pogba left, Rashford right, etc. Cavani through the middle because he hasn't played against Burnley, at least not 90 minutes. Or didn't start the game. So therefore, Greenwood could miss out. So it's a tough one. Liverpool at home is not great. Villa away is pretty good. Then it's Leicester at home. So I would say the fixtures are mixed. I don't think you need to run out and grab a Man United player. But if you've only got around 6.5 to 7.5... He's definitely worth looking at. And one of the things I really like, right? I've talked, you, you might be wondering why I'm not talking about Bruno Fernandes, who I also don't own. And remember that the watch list is about my team, the players that I'm looking at. Um, I keep doing the captain video every week. And every week, Bruno Fernandes is on there. Hardly any shots in the box. You watch him play. He's often outside the box. Sometimes he's shooting. Um, of course, is you know, the total number of shots is decent enough, but you want them in the box. And if... Fernandes is like a player that's scoring like three or four over the last kind of four matches. Well, over the last six matches, Mason Greenwood's had 15, which is really high. He's created a few chances, but most of this is coming from goal, uh, or most of his kind of attacking potential for FPL comes from goal threat. And he's looking really good. So 7 million might be the time to jump on. I still have a few worries over his minutes. Uh, and obviously for my team in particular, it will depend a lot on injuries, but I'm definitely watching him now. So next up is maybe a little bit surprising. That's Ollie Watkins. Now I'll tell you the reason why before you say it's a stupid idea. And even then you might still think it's stupid, which is fair enough. Um, now one thing for sure straight away, I ideally would love to see Jack Grealish back in an Aston Villa shirt, playing fit again to play 90 minutes every week before I got Ollie Watkins. But there are some reasons why I would look at him. One is obviously my front line currently consists of Vardy and Kane. Now, having a look how the FA Cup finalists have fallen, 
and looking at what Ben is saying, he thinks that if the Premier League do move some of the games to get fans back in stadiums, that Leicester could double in 35 and blank in 36. Now, I have my free hit. So in terms of using it, I'm probably going to use it for the double and then go through game week 36, not worrying about any teams that blank. But to do that, I've probably got to get rid of a Leicester player at some point. And Ollie, Ollie Watkins is definitely on my mind. Now, I probably don't need to do it this week unless Kane is ruled out um, for a long time. But I actually think like the next three fixtures out of four are quite good, um, especially when you think we've kind of... A lot of people have ditched their Aston Villa players. Um, but West Brom at home, Everton away, I think, is a good fixture too. And Crystal Palace away is pretty decent as well. It's Man United is probably the trickiest one there. Everton on their day can, of course, make things difficult as well um, but I think defensively they haven't been that great this year like Luca Dean for example someone we always hear about he's got a haul coming but the problem is he can't get a haul because he never gets a clean sheet so he's purely relying on attacker returns right so the next three look good also by the way without Grealish he's still kind of performing not bad right 1.22 expected goals over the last six it's not fantastic but it's not awful he's also creating quite a few chances so he's created eight and had 10 shots in the box and of course he's very cheap so if there was a point where you know as someone who's got Vardy and Kane I wanted to reduce the amount of money in my forward line to then put it into midfield someone like Watkins is where I'm looking at because Bamford is definitely an option to get back, but it's not until around game week 36 where Leeds fixtures get really good, whereas with Villa, that kind of happens a little bit earlier. Jack Grealish is definitely a big part of when I would want to bring Watkins in because I think he can score goals without him. But let's be honest, you don't take out... You know, it's not like Man City where, okay, they might lose to Bruyne for a little bit now. They've got plenty of other players that can come in, be creative, score goals, etc. Villa don't have that. Jack Grealish is so good and there's not really anyone close to him when it comes to Villa. So he would definitely be on my mind before I make this move. But if you look at the amount of forward options right now, there really aren't that many. I could see myself potentially either bringing someone like Watkins back in or moving back to a 3-5-2. But either way, it doesn't mean that I would necessarily go for um, someone really cheap like a Keenan Davis or a Rian Brewster, whoever it might be. I might want a backup bench option that's pretty decent. And Watkins fixtures are quite good. they got a double to come, although that might not matter so much for me depending on when it falls because I could be free hitting anyway. But it's definitely on the back of my mind. And sooner rather than later, I might need a forward option. And I'm not seeing too many out there. So I think most of us are kind of disowned Gareth Bale as an option. I know after talking to some Patreons um, that they were keeping him for the double game week. Then obviously seeing what happened after that, just in the hope that he would get one start. And given that Son didn't, uh, sorry, didn't do anything in the first game, if Bale comes into the second game, there is potential for him to outscore Son in game week 32. But obviously for the purposes of the watch list, I'm looking ahead. Now for 33, he's not an option, but this is a watch list. And the great thing is you get to now watch Spurs against Southampton in the Premier League, and you get to watch them in the EFL Cup final against Man City. And I think whoever kind of takes charge and right now it's ryan mason right the ryan mason i mean he's only 29 years old it's mad right the jose's gone uh, and i won't get too much into that but he's taken over for now now whether that will be until the end of the season whether they'll bring someone else in ahead of next year i don't know uh, but i think he will probably be a bigger fan of gareth bale than jose Mourinho did i think in general we should be watching spurs players now they might have some of the shackles off right just to go for it less defensive work for the likes of Bale and Son who knows how things are going to go but it is worth watching and the main reason is after 33 Spurs have Sheffield United at home leads away two really good fixtures they then got Wolves as well which isn't ideal but it's not an awful awful fixture um, and his stats were okay over the last six in terms of expected goals he gets into the right positions quite a few easy shots 2.08 um, non penalty xg is quite a lot considering he only had five shots in the box and created five chances but obviously compared to some other players on this list or if i look at other players over the last six matches he has played fewer minutes right if he comes on for kind of 10 20 minutes that counts as a match for him even though he hasn't played the full 90 um and there was a article on wales online um so it says ryan mason will take first team training today and is likely to be in the dugout at wembley right so it doesn't look like they're going to replace Mourinho too quick and obviously with all this super league stuff there's probably a lot more 
to think about. Um, Mason, so Ryan Mason and Bale were former teammates at Spurs, and the midfielder has already delivered his verdict on the Welshman. Um, what separates the good players from the greats, people remember, is consistency. The thing with Gareth was that those brilliant moments, he do them all the time in training. That winner against West Ham away, he must have scored more or less that same goal about 20 times on the training pitch, etc., etc. He said he was he was left in awe of the Wales skipper in training. It's one of those for me as a player during the latter stages of his first spell. You kind of watch him appreciate what he's doing. You just find himself admiring, or you find yourself admiring the player. Um, and obviously, then it goes on to say, obviously, if he could play in the Champions League, imagine what he's like in training. Basically, bigging him up. Now, I'm sure there's a few factors why this came into discussion, right? First of all, this is a Wales online paper. And so Mason, obviously a teammate of Bales, Bales, Welsh, etc. Of course, he's going to get talked about. They want to know if he's going to play. But if we see, we don't, we don't have to get him in now ahead of Southampton. We get to see what happens first. And if he's straight into the team, he's got maybe an even newer lease of life without Mourinho there. Then potentially he is one to watch. I'm not saying I'm going to bring him straight in, but he's definitely on the watch list for 9.2 million. We know what he can do. Look at that that double where he got what was it 19 points. I still don't know if he's got the legs to c- continuously play 90 minutes, but I want to see a bit more. And I think if he gets the nod for Southampton and Man City, that would be a big shout from Ryan Mason. If he gets to continue managing them, I'm sure Gareth Bale is going to get a few more minutes. How they do, I don't know, but it's an interesting kind of discussion point and we can speculate, but ideally you want to see them play first. So Bale is firmly on the watch list now because that Sheffield United game and leads away could be ideal. Obviously, there's going to be blanks and doubles to think about, so he might be a luxury player, but it's always worth keeping players like this in mind. There we go. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Please do give it a like if you've enjoyed it and hit subscribe for new around here i know fpl today is maybe not what everyone is thinking about obviously this whole super league stuff um it feels like quite a bit of a joke and i have done a video on it on the other channel if you want to go and check that out i've talked through it for about 20 odd minutes going through the statement and giving my point of view and it's not all bad uh as in i don't think some of the points they're raising are bad i'm just not convinced they'll see it through like they've spoken so i'm not ignoring it but I also don't want to just dwell on it for the whole week. There's game weeks to come. I'm hoping FPL continues as strong as it has. I want to be here creating content for it, something I really enjoy, and I hope you guys do too. So I'm not ignoring it. I just haven't put it out on this channel for now, but I'm not hiding from it. I'll, I'll post it on the community tab and all that good stuff. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the watch this video. If you did and you want to see more FPL content, hit that like button and hit subscribe as well. Big shout out to the patrons as well who've been supporting me over this season and past seasons as well. Everyone that was in blue has been signed up for at least a year and a big shout out to Jamie who has signed up since the last video as well. I'll leave it there. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. I will do a live stream, like a knee jerk live stream at some point this week, probably on Wednesday or Thursday because I didn't want to do it on Sunday. One, because I wanted to watch Line of Duty, but more to the point, there'd only been like four matches and it just didn't seem worth it. Maybe five matches, I can't remember. Um, but either way, there were some big players still left to come, like Salah, Jota, Vardy, Inacho, uh, etc. Right, plus the Man City Villa game. Yada, yada, yada. I'm leaving it there. You've heard me say all that now. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you soon.